Welcome back. This is Shelley Letwin from GV Design Canada, and this is part 11. Yes, you made it. Part 11 in our matrix setting series. Now, even if you don't have matrix and you're using Rhino or 3Design or Panther, I hope that some of these numbers and some of these things that I pointed out are going to help you in whatever program you're using. I hope you enjoy designing jewelry as much as I do. I've had 20 years experience using Matrix. I started off with Gem Vision in 1999 when we first developed Matrix. Lots of stories and maybe one day I'll write about them, but it was probably one of the best jobs I ever had. Anyhow, okay, back to our earring. So I've got a hoop here with the gemstones that are tapered, graduating in different sizes. They are set in a channel, sort of a U-shaped head, very popular in Western Canada a number of years ago. And the rules are going to apply with this U-shaped like channel set. So how did I achieve this? Well, I do have an intermediate class that I've been telling you guys that you can either take online or buy the videos. I was able to design just one U-shape for one gemstone and then apply it to the rest of the gemstones very easy with, I'll give you a teaser here if we go into gems, and this is the tool. It's called Orient to Gem. So here's the builder here. You're going to add your gems. You're going to add your one setting. And then you're pretty much going to hit set to gems. There's other things that you have to be aware of as well. But it works really, really well. Especially if you want to make a custom head that you cannot save in head builder. This is an awesome tool in that it's going to save you so much time. Especially if you have to make earrings for 3 millimeter, 4 millimeter, 4.5, 5, 5.5, 6, you get the idea. And then you can just go ahead and make the one head and it'll apply it to the, the other sizes. So it has saved lots of time for me. So let's hop over to side view. And in side view, you'll notice I have wireframe turned on. If I hit the arrow down, this is what I mean by wireframe that we can actually see through. If we click on shaded, we can't see through. So let's go to wireframe. And again, you want about 5% and 5% of the stone embedded into the walls. Now I just eyeballed it. I think that's just going to be fine. Um, you've got to make sure that your metal thickness, so if I click on aligned dimension, here we go, we're 0.4 millimeters. These are earrings. They're not going to get a lot of wear and tear unless your customer is really bad about throwing them in the bottom of their purse. Then they're going to get a little bit destroyed in there. But this is enough metal for the setter for sure. And that's on our smallest gemstone. So if we go down to this one here, we're at 0.66. So plenty of metal there for the setter. The other thing too is you might want to leave them a little gap here so that they can round this up and make it look like two separate U shapes. You'll also notice that I put some filler pieces in here. So again, if we go to the side viewport, you see I put these little triangles in here. Go back to perspective. And then I just extruded it across. So again, we've got a better connection here. So when the setter's setting it, you just don't have this one little weak joint here. Other thing too is remember for easy cleanup, you don't want an investment to get trapped in there. And it'll be a lot easier for your jeweler to come in here and finish this and make the back look very nice. I also use gem cutter. So if we turn off the gemstones, I use gem cutter just to create a little notch here for the setter. Again, I did them at 100%. You might want to do it at like 95%. So it's just 
a scribe line so that they can go in there and open this up a little bit more. You don't want to cut it all the way to the edge because you don't want the stone sliding out. So just a little, a little groove in here so that the rest of the metal is going to prevent the stone from sliding out. Okay, so another short and sweet video. I do like Oriented Gem is one of my favorite tools. I have a lot of favorite tools, but it is one of my favorites. And anytime I get a chance to use it, I'm so happy. And I did want to share it with you. Thank you so much for sitting in on these videos. I hope you learned something and that I wasn't wasting your time. Again, I'm Shelly Letwin from GV Design Canada. I do have online classes and there are videos also to purchase so that you can learn on your own time. And I hope I see you soon with some more videos that are going to help you master Matrix and become a very good CAD operator. So that's the goal, that we all design pretty jewelry. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.